Hello, my name is Jasper Rubino, and it is January 21st, 2012. I am with Cohort 17 at the SMU Guildhall, and this is the first of three videos explaining the content workflow of bringing a character with a skeleton and animation into UDK and getting it to play in UDK, um, actually in game. So, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you a, the basics of setting up a skeleton in a mesh and how to paint weight everything so you can go ahead and animate it correctly. Um, in the following video, Julia is going to show you how to take that mesh, apply a couple different textures to it, and get it ready for export into UDK. In the third video will be Tyler showing you how to work the animation in Kismet and get it to play properly at your desired time and pacing actually in-game. So, the first portion of this video, I'm going to go ahead and get started and import a male mesh it's pretty basic uh, mesh here of a human. Um, I'm first going to go over this and putting a skeleton in. Then I'm quickly going to pause the video and bring in a skeleton. I already have a line correctly. And I'm going to go over the three ways of paint weighting. Because this is going to take a little bit, I'm breaking this video into two sections. So there will be a separation within this. Just to, uh, just to give you a heads up. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started right here out of my male mesh. Go over here to the create tab, slide over here into systems, biped, and click and drag on the grid like you would anything else in Max to create it. You want to line it up as close as you can with your mesh, and that looks pretty good. Right click so you're not selecting on it anymore, and head over to the motion tab. Here you want to click on figure mode, and this will let you move the skeleton to the location of your mesh. Now you're going to want to line this up within your mesh as smooth as possible. For example, you know, placing that there and sliding this here. This is pretty self-explanatory. You have all the regular controls um, that you have in Max at this point. So you want to align everything. Sometimes if you're having issues with this, uh, as you can see I just select my mesh, you may want to freeze your selection. So you're only selecting you know what you want. You probably want to make it transparent before you freeze it. Um, but yeah, that's a very helpful thing to freeze this. Now I'm only grabbing the bones here and lining those up. You know, scale scale certain parts larger if you need them or longer. However you you know find fit to fit within your mesh. Um, at this point, I'm going to quickly pause the video and load a basic the same male mesh with the skeleton all aligned, so I can show you the proper ways of paint weighting. So I will be back in one second. Okay, and I'm back. Here's the male mesh with the skeleton aligned properly. And we're going to dive into the steps of paint weighting. Um, so you should have your character with the mesh uh, as closely aligned as possible within here. Um, I'd like to quickly go over quickly go over the basics of customizing this mesh. Because you can, you know, um, here, actually let me take a step back here in the motion tab underneath structure there's information about your skeleton you can increase the neck links you know uh, get as wild as you like um, increase the fingers uh, the segments in the fingers as you can see here that was happening you know for however many fingers you uh, your character needs and obviously go ahead and align these in the correct position just like you did with the rest of the skeleton as it will help you later paint weighting um, the more precise you are now the less tedious work you will have to do later. So go ahead and align that. But that's the gist of customizing the skeleton. So you should have everything where you want it to be. Um, after this stage, you're going to go back into your modifier tab and go ahead and select your mesh. I think I have them frozen, so I'll unfreeze that. I'm just right clicking on it to get that freeze, unfreeze selection. Also, if you want to make it transparent, Alt X is the way to do that. Sometimes it helps when you're working. Now here I have this edible poly mesh. I'm going to go ahead in the modifier list and choose skin. Choose down here. Now this is pretty much telling the mesh that hey, there's a skeleton in you, and I want you to deform to the skeleton. Uh, to get this set up, you want to click envelope, or you can click it right here to edit the envelopes, um, and you want to add all the bones in the scene. Now go ahead and select all these. Um, if you, some people set up uh, little control points um, up here or for the hips to just easy ways to grab your skeleton and move those around. If you have done that, 
make sure you don't select them in this point or they themselves will affect the mesh instead of them affecting the skeleton affecting the mesh so uh, that being said select all the bones hit select you'll see them all added here now this is the first way of paint weighting we're going to go ahead and choose the right forearm and the area of this is actually what's going to deform the mesh so you're going to want to move them in scale them down and get this as precise as possible so it's a pretty easy way of setting up your rig or at least getting the general placement there quickly um, so here you have these gray squares which are the outer points these two are the actual bottom and right parts of the joint so you can grab that and move this entire thing if you want we obviously don't want to do that we may want to align it better so we're going to go ahead and do that and that is the first way of paint weighting and probably the most basic also if your mesh isn't transparent you can you know uh, make it non-transparent and now you actually see the area of deformation that will affect your mesh when you uh, when it is not transparent so it's a pretty pretty awesome way of setting this up I mean if, if, if you're not getting that detailed you can just run through here and do this and it'll work perfectly um, and I'm probably gonna stop this video now and we'll start the second part in the second part I'm gonna go over uh, paint weighting by vertices and the traditional way of paint weighting um, your joints and bones uh, as it's done uh, primarily in Maya so uh, we're gonna go over to the 3ds max ways of doing that so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video at this time um, actually let's I'd like to test this real quick so to do that I just hit skin up here I'm gonna grab this hand I think the mesh may be selected so I'm gonna all select that as you can see this area moved back to the hand or whatever I've selected now I can move this and the forearm seems to be acting okay um, as you can see we're getting some weird bending in here and things like that and this elbow um, you can get detailed in, in the same way I was showing you but in the next video is another way where you can go ahead and, and really fix those areas before you go double click on this and back into the edit envelopes make sure you undo whatever you've moved here so it's back in its original position if not let's show you we're going to hit envelope, and my rig is obviously back over here now. So let's undo, undo till our rig is back in its original position like it is here. Now I'm going to hit envelopes, everything is lined up. So that is, that is pretty key if you want to quickly test how you're paint weighting stuff. So once again, we're getting some weird bending in here. That's because uh, the red means 100% uh, deformity, yellow is about half, and blue is maybe a quarter. So... This bone is definitely affecting this area and not so much here, which is why we got that weird little pinch and fold. So we're going to, um, I'm going to pause this video, uh, start another one, and then we will dive into painting by vertices and the traditional way of paint weighting with a brush tool. So, okay, I'll see you in a second.